Hey guys, the Explorer 4 here, Horrorboy465. Welcome back to some more reviews. And today, I'm continuing my reviews on the Friday the 13th franchise with my review of Friday the 13th Part 4, The Final Chapter. Uh, or Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter, whichever. I don't know why it's always called it just Part 4, The Final Chapter. Um, and I know that from all the posters, at least from what I've seen, I don't think any of them like literally say part four on them. If, if one of them may say that, I'm not sure, but I know that there's not really a part four on there. It doesn't really say part four, but for some reason I've always called it, you know, Friday the Part Four, the final chapter. Um, of course, you have uh, this DVD cover as well. I think I already showed you guys the uh, DVD case in general the other day, but. Friday the 13th, Part 4, The Final Chapter, is a very important film in the franchise. It's a film that, for some reason before, I thought was overrated for some reason. It's a movie that I thought got too much credit. And, again, that's what I'm saying. It's just, for some reason, I thought that. Again, now, I don't know why I said that. Um, because watching it nowadays, this is really, honestly, one of the best ones in the franchise. Um... I think that part five gets overshadowed by this movie just a little bit too much. Um, this movie's been said to be the best movie of the franchise. Some people, uh, to some people, it's the best sequel in the franchise. Uh, to some people, it's just you know, I think already said it's their favorite. So to some people, it's their favorite sequel. It's their favorite sequel. But for me, I could say it's one of my favorite sequels. I wouldn't say it's my favorite movie. Um, I wouldn't rank it above Part 5, I still can't do that, um, I love Part 5, I just, I can't get enough of Part 5, I love that movie to death, um, and people are probably like, well, why do you like Part 5 so much, and I, I kind of want to say that for the next review, um, I'm just gonna say this, Part 4, I love Part 4, but I think it just uh, kind of overshadows Part 5 a little bit, there's things in Part 5 that are a little bit underrated in my opinion, but we'll get to that in the review for Part 5. But this film came out in 1984. It's a 5.9 IMD, directed by Joseph Zito, who's the director of a movie that I actually reviewed recently called The Prowler. He's also the director of Red Scorpion, Missing in Action. Um, he's also directed... He's only directed 10 things. Uh, he also made, I guess he directed, uh, Alice Cooper, He's Back, The Man Behind the Mask video, I guess. That's pretty cool. But yeah, Missing in Action, The Prowler, uh, I haven't seen Missing in Action, I haven't seen Red Scorpion either, but I heard they're pretty good movies. Um, the Prowler I actually really enjoyed. I guess there's a movie called Blood Rage, which I've heard about. Actually, is that the movie I think I'm talking about? I've heard of it. I don't know if I've heard, like, I don't remember if I've heard, like, good or bad things about it. I think it's a 5.0. But the Prowler I've seen, I was really impressed with. I want to see Red Scorpion. I want to see Missing in Action. So Part 4 definitely has a good director, Joseph Zito. I mean, he does a really good job as far as picking the cast and getting really good actors. And um, as far as camera work and making the atmosphere. I mean, I think Joseph Zito really nailed all that. And also, I think he was involved in the script. Um, I believe so. Uh, if my internet's working okay. Because it just, it just froze up real quick. I think he's also the writer. If I, even if I can't get it from IMDb, I can get it from the back of this case, probably. Um, screenplay by Barney Cohen. Story by Bruce Hidimi Sakao. Um, I may have just butchered those freaking names, but, you know, I don't think he was involved in yeah, cause story and screenplay. He wasn't involved in the story. So, in those two cases, they did a really good job as far as the writing goes. Um, but Joseph Zito is a very good director, a very good choice for this film. And uh, I definitely think that they chose a really good director to direct this movie. Um, and actually, I think I think IMDb did just, yeah, it just froze up. Yeah, and, and anyways, I probably won't be able to use too much of IMDb on this review. Because it just, my internet literally just disconnected for some reason. So, um, we're going to continue the review. Um, we're gonna ride the storm out because I can't, I can't really fix it because the internet's gone. Yeah, it's disconnected for some reason. Now we'll get past it. But Friday the Part Four, the final chapter, I think is a very unique film because for me, 
I think it combines, it just has like, you know, really great acting in it for really good actors. Um, characters that you can actually remember, like Crispin, Crispin Glover's character is very easy to remember. Him and his buddy, they're always joking around with each other, and he's talking about Crispin Glover talking about his past girlfriend. Um, is it Betty? He's talking about Betty, or as they say in the movie, BJ Betty. It's, that's literally a line in the movie they say, uh, at least Crispin Glover's friend says that. And I love the, I just, it's a classic scene that everybody talks about, but I love the computer scene, where he types it in the computer, he's like, he's like, you're a dead F word, so I can't really say that right now, but it's a very funny scene, if you guys want to actually laugh at that and really understand the humor behind it, then watch the movie, because I can't really repeat it on this review, but it's just, in, in general, if you know that scene, you know what I'm talking about, it's a very hilarious scene, really enjoyed it, very good character moment. And um, it showed that they were able to uh, be making or at least being able to build up characters and show that these characters are friends and stuff like that. And I think the story, once again, is very basic. These Friday the 13th films don't really have the most advanced stories, but I like how they approach it with simplicity, but yet it still works perfectly. Um, the formula they use, the way it's done, the way that it's made... It's just a perfect formula for a slasher film. I mean, if you want nudity, you had nudity in this film. If you want gore, you have gore in this movie. If you, have good, if you want good effects, good makeup effects is in this movie. Um, Jason comes back, Return of Jason. Different, kind of like a different look, but kind of similar to Part 3's look, where it's, the, it's like a brown shirt this time, I believe, and I think it's just pants and boots again. And the mask, of course, looks pretty cool in this movie because... The mask is a little bit more damaged in this movie. It has the axe wound right here. And that's just always been a really cool look for Jason. Um, I also really enjoyed, if I can get the actor's name, I think it's Ted White, who played Jason in this movie. Did a really good job as Jason. Um, forgot to mention, uh, I think Richard Brooker, who played Part 3's Jason, did a very good job as well. Rest in peace, Richard Brooker. I, I, think, I think that's what his name is. I don't want to get the names wrong. Uh... I don't think it says it. Yeah, it does. Richard Brooker as Jason. He did a really good job. And you do have... I believe it's Ted White who played Jason in Part 4. And then in Part 2... I know that it's not really... Because there's a big thing with Part 2 with the guy who played Jason. There's a lot of drama with that going on. Like, he tried to say that he was Jason. And there's actually another guy who was really Jason... Um, but this other guy was, I think it was like Warrington Gillette, if I'm not mistaken, the guy who was, you know, trying to say that he played Jason to the whole film, but really he only played him in one scene, and then this other guy sort of came out onto the scene and actually was the real guy who played Jason um, for most of the movie. I believe it's Warrington Gillette. I gotta, re I gotta look up all, I gotta get refreshed and all that stuff, but... Ted White in this movie is very good, very fast Jason, a Jason that has just lightning quick reflexes, he's very fast, um, the kills are very brutal from Jason, Jason's on a mission in this movie, um, and Jason in this movie is just very well done, he's very fast, uh, he kills people in an instant, a very dangerous Jason in this movie, um, you also have some pretty good characters like Tommy Jarvis in this movie, played by Corey Feldman, who would actually become a big star in the 90s, and being the Lost Boys, uh, Lost Boys 1, 2, and 3. He'd also be in License to Drive, a uh, really big fan of the movie called The Burbs. That's a really good movie with Corey Feldman in it. Um, he was going on to be in a lot of 80s movies. He became a big star in the 80s. In um, this movie, I think, was his debut film, so he did a really good job playing Tommy Jarvis. You have Crispin Glover in a very early role. Of course, Crispin Glover going to be Willard in the Willard remake. He's also going to be in Charlie's Angels. and um, He's been doing a lot of stuff lately, I think, with films. I'm not too sure. Um, but Crispin Glover, I've always enjoyed his acting. He played very, you know, crazy, unique characters. Um, but Crispin Glover in this movie is just hilarious. The scene where he's dancing and you know, he's trying to pick up girls, and this one actually, he actually manages to pick up a girl, and the guy who was making fun of him the whole time didn't get anything, so that was pretty funny, I have to admit. The comedy in the movie was really well done, 
and that's the thing. It's like it's comedy, but it's like contained comedy. It's not over the top. It's not too much. Um, it's the right amount of just you know kind of humor in the movie. Not really lots of it, but when that happens, it's pretty funny. And there's ideas in this movie that I think are very well made. Like the idea of the guy who's coming back to camp to get revenge for his sister who died in part two. Uh, his sister is actually the girl who got killed in double impalement, seeing the spear going to the bed. That was his sister. He's coming back to camp late to get revenge on Jason. I like that idea. I like how it's the kids going back to the camp. And it's not really a camp still. It's just sort of like a place in the lake. And Jason gets out of the morgue. I really enjoy that idea. And the story is very basic. I mean, you have the beginning of the movie where it shows the aftermath of part three. Uh, Jason is brought to the morgue pretty much. Kills some people while he's in there. Goes back to the camp or to the to, to, the, to the lake. There's not really a camp in this movie. It's just sort of these cabins by the lake. And he goes back to Camp Russell Lake and there are these kids there. And there's also a guy hunting Jason down. And uh, he has to figure out how to kill the kids and, and pretty much just do what Jason does. He goes in the rampage mode, starts slaughtering these kids, and you have some really good gore effects, some nudity in there if you want some of that. Um, if you want some really, really cool death scenes, they have that. And this movie has a lot going for it. I also really enjoy the score in this movie. This movie has its own, once again, these sequels do a very good job with having their own tone. Yeah, they borrow things from the first movie, like... The ending of part three that borrowed the ending from part one or and part two and in part I guess in part not really part two but part three you have the impalement death scene where the the guy or the girl gets like the freaking knife through her chest like Kevin Bacon did in the first movie. And in the second movie you also had some elements that were kind of taken from the first movie. But these movies have always managed to have their own looks, their own feels. Every movie has their own look of Jason. Um, their own style of filmmaking. Um, and they've always been good of just having, especially the first five movies, of having that really great third act. And this movie has a great finale. I mean, you got Jason getting a freaking TV pushed on his head, uh, getting hit with a hammer in the head, getting the claw part of it in the back of the neck. Um, the lead girl, which I hope they have her on the back of this, Kimberly Beck, she was good. I think that she's... I think she's good. I don't. I wouldn't say honestly, she's not one of my favorites. And it's not even anything towards the actress. I mean, the acting was pretty good. The character was pretty good. It was just, I don't know. I mean, it's not really a character that I drew towards a lot. But she's definitely a strong lead. Fights back a lot towards Jason. There's even a scene where Jason crashes through the stairs and she takes the freaking machete and whacks him in the arm with it. And then she, there's a scene later on where she whacks him right in between the fingers, goes right through his hand, and she pulls it off, and she knocks his mask off. So this girl, Kimberly Beck, in the movie, did a really good job. She fought back. Uh, so it wasn't like – and she was also a good actress. So it wasn't like I'm like saying, oh, well, she wasn't a good actress or she didn't do that right or she didn't do this right. Just personally, not really a character I really drew to a lot, but she is a good character in this film. She's not really one of my favorite leads, I would say, but she is a good character. I will admit that. I will give credit when credit's due. She's a really good lead, really good actress, strong lead, and um, did a very good job in the film. But I just really enjoy the third act where Jason's just chasing after them, and they're fighting back, and Jason gets knocked. He pretty much crashes through the door and throws the hammer right towards them, and it hits them right beside – like it hits the, the wall right beside them. The scene where you think he's dead and he swings a freaking axe and almost hits Kimberly Beck's character and I think and also Tommy. Um, that ending scene where Tommy shaves his head and tries to pretend to be Jason and throws Jason off and Jason gets his mask knocked off and freaking the machete right here by Tommy. Tommy just takes a machete and he goes, boom! And then, like, I like how it fall, like the body falls and the machete is just like, it's a very, really good effect. Um, you have Tom Savini coming back in this movie for the effects, and you can definitely tell the effects are fantastic in this film. Um, and pretty much it ends with Jason being chopped to pieces by Tommy. In the last shot of the movie, you think Tommy's a little out of it and a little crazy, and it kind of leads into part five. Um, and this movie's also got some very well-done death scenes. I mean, you got Crispin Glover's death scene where he gets 
you know, where's the corkscrew? The corkscrew gets struck right on his hand, and he gets a freaking meat cleaver to the face. Just boom. Um, a girl gets thrown, out, gets thrown out of a window and crashes on the car below. Um, there's a scene where this girl finds her boyfriend dead, and she runs, and a freaking axe just flies through the door and hits her. Um, there's a death scene in the, in the bathroom where this guy gets his freaking head crushed into the wall. Like, Jason just pushes through and crushes the guy's skull and his whole, pretty much his head, into the wall. Freaking crazy death scene. And you got a death scene where um, a guy gets stabbed through a, uh, like a film thing. He's watching a film on this, I don't know how to describe it. It's like he's watching a film, an 8mm type film. On his backboard, and Jason stabs the backboard and hits him right in the back of the head. Um, the guy who tries to get revenge for his sister, what's really creepy about that death scene is that you don't really see it, but you really just hear the pain and the yells and screams, and it's a very kind of creepy death scene. And I think he gets like a freaking gardening claw or something like that and hits the guy to kill that guy that tried to get revenge for his sister. Um, this one guy gets a freaking harpoon gun shoved right in his spot and lifted. And Jason shoots the harpoon gun. Oh my god. It was such a painful death scene to watch. Very painful. Um, there's also kind of an impalement death scene where this girl's laying on her back in this, like, on this, out in this floaty thing, out in this boat. And Jason comes out of the water, takes a freaking knife, and just shoves it through her back. Uh, or shoves it through her stomach and out her back. So it's kind of like an impalement death scene. Uh, there's a girl gets a freaking knife shoved right through her throat and she's like eating a banana and the freaking it's like banana and blood and gore it's a really gross death scene um there's a guy who gets his freaking head sawed and twisted uh there's a girl who gets practically gutted by like these like either like a pair of scissors or like a knife or something like that maybe a scalpel jason like chokes her and impales her and like pretty much guts her but it's not too really too graphic but you know you do get the general idea that he pretty much gutted her so really good death scenes in this film. The death scenes are very strong in this movie, and the effects are very well done as well. But part four, it is one of my favorites. It's definitely a very, very well-made sequel. It's a movie that has a lot of stuff going for it. It has a really good score, um, its own score, its own look, its own feel. Uh, Jason is a very fast and dangerous character in this movie. Uh, likeable characters, good actors like Corey Feldman. Uh, Crispin Glover, um, I'm trying to think who else was in the movie. Ted White did a really good job as uh, Jason. Um, the lead girl, Kimberly Beck, did a pretty good job. You have freaking amazing effects by Tom Savini, a good script. Uh, for being, I guess, a false final chapter, it definitely ended on a semi-final note um, until we got part five, but... You know, it's it's just altogether a very well made movie that a very well made movie that I really enjoy. So, anyways, guys, that's pretty much all I gotta say about Friday the Thirteenth Part Four, the final chapter. Hope you guys enjoyed the review, and um, I will see you guys a little bit later on for my review for Friday the Thirteenth Part Five, a new beginning. But yeah, Part Four is a very fun movie, very well made, very important from the franchise, and I really enjoy it. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching the review, and the Explorer Four out. See you guys later.